good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm going to change microphones. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 15. I was about to can't even walk without you holding my hand. That was good. Amen. Luke chapter 15. We'll be reading from verses 11 through 18. I just want to say it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's hot outside, and it makes me glad I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If, if hell was your destination, you need to reconsider. <laughs> because it's hot. But uh, I'm glad to know that Jesus Christ is on the throne and that I'm a child of God. Yeah. Now I just want to speak to you this morning a few minutes on, on, on from the Word of God. If you, if you will, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 18. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger then said to his father, Father, give me the portions of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and they wasted, and there wasted his substance with righteous living. And we had spent all that arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country. Everybody says citizen. And he went and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave him to him. And when he came to himself, that's an important line, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Today I want to speak to you on the subject that I feel that the body of Christ must adopt. If we're ever going to make a difference in this community, if we're ever going to make a difference in this generation, if we're ever going to make a difference on the things that would come against this church, I feel like there's something that we must adopt. In today's society, we have allowed a serious problem to take us by storm. And unfortunately, as we as the church have allowed that problem to slip in to the church itself. For the last few months, the Lord has been laying a subject on my heart. I feel like I'm going to be doing more serious than just individual letter rib kind of messages unless the Lord changes my mind. If the Lord speaks to my heart, I'll speak that word. But I feel like He wants to make me speak on a more uh, serious basis on the subject and break down more stuff and explain because. As Paul would say, I plead for you not to be ignorant. We, I want us to not be an ignorant church. I want us to know. But not until this week have I felt released to, uh, to go this direction. So here we go. Are you ready? Look at your neighbor and say, buckle up. More than ever before, I feel like that we as a people and we as a church have come under the terrible act of identity. I said, I feel like we as a people, and we have, as a church, have come under the terrible crime and the terrible act of suffering from identity theft. On the physical, approximately 15 million United States residents have their identities used fraudulently each year with financial losses totaling up to $50 billion. Close to one hundred million additional Americans have their personal identifying information placed at risk of identity theft each year when records maintained in government and corporate databases are lost or stolen. One in every ten U.S. citizens have already been victimized by identity theft. There might be people in here today that on a physical level have suffered from some sort of identity theft. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. If there's ever been a time to where Christians have forgotten who they are, I believe that that time is now. We as the body of Christ over years have allowed our heritage, our beliefs, and more importantly, our morals to be blurred with the things of this world. Are you here today? 
And I believe that if we are going to ever see an outbreak of the power of God in our lives, if we're ever going to see a difference in our church, if we're ever going to see a difference in our community, there's one thing that we must establish, and we must establish it now. Who we are. Amen. Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you know who you are? If I could title this message today, I would say, I know who I am. I'm going to stay on the subject for probably a few weeks when I know who I am, but today I'm going to talk about I know who I am. I'm blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Tell the devil. I know who I am. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, tell him, say, neighbor. Tell the devil. I'm blessed. I'm blessed this morning. Amen. How many is blessed this morning? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you and I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you, God, for your mighty works. I thank you for your power, God. I thank you, God, for all that you've done. More importantly, God, I thank you for what you are about to do in our lives. We come against everything that we come against this service. We come against every enemy, every demonic, oppressing, depressing spirit that will try to come against the children of God today. Lord, we bind it with chains that won't let go in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, that you would take this vessel of clay, that you would begin to mold it and use it as you would see fit, and that you would let there be receptive ears in this congregation today and speak to the hearts and lives of these people as we give you the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 If we can go back to the scripture and look at verse 12. It says, And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall upon me. I want, I want to, and, and the Bible says he divided unto them his living. Everybody say them. Yeah. Before we go any further in this message, I want to point out in the parable that we see different characters in this parable. We see the father. We see two sons. And we also see a man who is being characterized as the citizen of the town, or the citizen of the country. The father, we can say, would represent our heavenly father. The two sons we could say would represent us and the choices that we make. We can choose this and we can choose that. And we're going to say that the citizen of the country is going to represent the devil. Everybody say the devil. Yeah. Now going back to verse 12, we see the Bible says that the youngest son asked for the blessing. I want a blessing, amen? How many want a blessing from the Lord this morning? Yeah. I want a blessing. He wanted a blessing. There's nothing wrong with wanting a blessing. There's nothing wrong with the fact that he come and said that I want my blessing. He says, I want my blessing. I want it now. And the Bible says that when the younger had asked for the blessing, that the father divided unto them the blessings. Not only did he give the blessing to the younger son, but the Bible says that he divided it unto them. So I'm reading from these scriptures that he went ahead and blessed the other son as well. Now, church, I believe that God wants to bless all his people today. Look at your neighbor and say, he wants to bless you. We're blessed. God is, is not wanting to hold his blessings from somebody and give it to another and withhold it from here. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many have received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. As many as received him. If you receive the name of Jesus Christ, he wants to bless you. If you receive and believe that God and Jesus Christ is alive and well today, then God wants to pour his blessings out on you today. Amen? Amen. But in this, I see a brother that is content in being in the house with his father. He received his blessing just like his younger brother did. But, however, he was content staying in the house. On the other hand, the complete opposite. We see the younger son who has received this blessing and has grown restless with this identity of who he is in the house. He's grown restless with who he is in the house. He is the son of the master. But however, with the blessings that he has in hand, he wants to establish his role 